So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, a story is told of a young man who was always fond of making promises to God. Every time when he had a problem, he'll go to God, he'll go to church and pray, Lord, if you help me, I will do this or I will do that. And he was always in the habit of not keeping his promises or vows to God. And this continued throughout his life until he reached the age of 40s. There came a big crisis in his life when he lost his job. His wife was on the verge of leaving him. And at that moment, he didn't know what to do. He decided everything was over and he wanted to commit suicide. And as he took his car for a last drive, unknowing to him, he drove to the nearest church. And as he entered the church, the moment his eyes touched the tabernacle, he just broke down and cried. And he realized at that one moment, the only mistake he made in his life was he did not love God enough. My dear friends, many of us go through this kind of an experience at one time or another in our life when we will realize that we have not loved God enough. Some of us now, because we cannot come to church, we are just bursting inside, just erupting. When I can go, I want to see Jesus, I want to love him. This past three months has really stirred a lot of feelings, love for us, for our God. But don't let this thirst, this feeling die the moment you come to church. The moment you start receiving, you stop. Everything becomes normal. Then we will have to pray that we get another COVID-21 so that it will be longer so we can train harder. Whenever we go through a moment, we have to always ask ourselves, God is preparing us for something. We have to ask ourselves, what is God preparing me for? In the first reading today, we find this lady, a Shumanite lady, who took notice of Elisha. Elisha is the follower or disciple of Prophet Elijah. Elisha, whenever he passed by, they asked him to have a meal and he obliged. And after that, every time whenever he passed by, he'll break his journey, he'll have a meal and then he will go. And this relationship made that lady to want to have more of Elisha. She saw that he was a holy man and she tells her husband, let us build him a room on the roof. We give him a bed, a table, a chair. Whenever he comes, he can stay here. They wanted to grow in that relationship with this man. And therefore, they did what goodness they could do. My dear friends, that is the starting point always. All relationships begin with goodness. We do something good. Sometimes to those we know, sometimes to those we do not know. But that becomes the starting point of a new relationship. And that is the beauty in today's first reading. The woman, the woman gave to Elisha what good she could give. And Elisha in return will give to her the miracle she could not make. She was old and without a child. If you were to continue to read it, Elisha will tell her within a year you will have a child. And then she will get a child. After that the child will grow up and die. And then she will go back to Elisha and say, Did I ask you for a child? You gave me a child and it now died. And then Elisha will go and resurrect the child or give it life again. My dear friends, my, our life is a process. There is no one point in our life when we can say this is the end. It always evolves. It always takes us to a deeper relationship. It's either whether we want to go or whether we don't want to go. Whether with our known family members, our unknown friends, or even with God. We always make this decision. But today we find that many people are disappointed with relationships. Many broken relationships. Husband, wife cannot trust one another. Children have no peace in the house. And therefore we find the home which is supposed to be the basic cell of the human society is no longer functional. 
but has become dysfunctional and the reason for this is because we have not put god in the center we have forgotten our own identity as children of god and that's why in the second reading today paul is reminding the romans when we were baptized in christ jesus we were baptized in his death in other words when we were baptized we entered the tomb with jesus and then we came out in the olden days baptism was always immersion in the olden days they will take you to a river or they can take you to the sea must use only natural water and they will immerse you three times fully in and fully out the fully in the three times you go inside you are dead the three times when you come up you are alive if you don't believe me you try you go into the swimming pool you try to breathe and see the moment we enter the pool automatically you will not breathe we become dead but when we come up we long for that new breath that fresh air we want it very very much the first time we always go down now the immersion the three immersion is always done in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit these three are very vital when we enter in the name of the father we are created as a new being original sin is removed uh, original sin is washed away then we become a child of god and we are inserted into a community if we are adults who are going for baptism even our personal sin and punishment for those sin is also removed that's how powerful baptism is the second time we go in we go in in the name of jesus we go in and then we come out we put on christ because jesus himself went to be baptized at jordan we come out putting on christ and the third one the third time when we baptize in the name of the holy spirit we are actually poured with the graces and blessings of the spirit this is what happens to us each time we baptize a child or even an adult it is a great mystery that we are entering into without knowing it so parents when we bring our children to be baptized this is what is happening to them but sometimes we do not know what we are asking for the child doesn't know what is happening to it and sometimes that whole celebration it is just becoming a christian it is not just becoming a christian it is actually beginning a new relationship with the god who loves us more than we can love him that is what paul is trying to tell them through his death jesus united us with himself and because of his resurrection we believe that we too will one day share in his glory but although we have this baptism although we have this relationship with god things are not easy sometimes people tell the more good you do the more evil that comes to your way all these are human experiences real experiences but these experiences always offer us a choice we can either see it as a way of god leading us guiding us or turning us around or we can see it as things which are going against our wishes that makes us miserable unhappy and sometimes we even doubt the presence of god and in the gospel today jesus is challenging us he is telling us what are the things that will make us always to turn back to him or turn around when we don't want to see him one is he says anyone who prefers father or mother is not worthy of me anyone who prefers son or daughter to me is not worthy of me a very problematic verse why does jesus says this in the old testament in the 10 commandments the fourth commandment will always will tell the people honor your father and mother so that you will live long in the land that the lord gives you only the fourth commandment is connected to the land the blessing god gives is always tied to honoring of parents then why does jesus says this to understand this we have to look at the old testament the 10 commandments of moses is divided into two tablets the first tablets is about god our relationship with god what we give to god 
and the second part is our relationship to men 1 2 and 3 is about god 4 to 10 is about men the first one is i am the only god second one is don't use my name in vain third one remember to keep holy the sabbath day and the fourth one among all the relationship of men the most important one is parental relationship honor your father and mother and we find that this one being an important one today jesus is referring to the divine put god first he is telling all of us today 1 2 and 3 keep that one more close to your hearts he is not telling abandon number 4 he is telling titan 1 2 and 3 put this in order and then our love for men will flow from the love we have for our god and that's why my dear friends it is always very very challenging for us but god is always coming in search of humanity the three questions god asks men after the fall genesis chapter 3 verse 9 the first question after the fall when god asked man was where are you why is it that i'm in paradise i created you to be in communion with me but i cannot see you where are you the second question will come after the answer of uh, the man verse 10 the man gives the answer i was naked so i hid and then genesis chapter 3 verse 11 will give us the second the and the third question of god who told you you were naked have you eaten of the fruit i forbade you to eat god knew man sinned but god didn't ask did you eat the fruit first it is only the third question even when we sin god is only asking where are you why i cannot see you that's how much he loves us what oh, that only the third question is about what adam did what the man did is only the third question although god already knew god wanted him to come back but because he was hiding only the third one god reminds him you have done this sometimes my dear friends god does this to us god will allow us to be in our ignorance in our sin but one day he will ask the question did you do this sin we are accountable for it it might be the third question or the fourth question god will love us first but ultimately that question will come and that's why today when jesus tells the second one anyone who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me he is inviting us to look at everything in our lives as a means of holiness many people reduce the cross to suffering to pain to uncomfortable to everything that is not desirable but we forget for jesus the cross was where he died whatever sufferings whatever pains whatever uncomfort we go through my dear friends they are also means for us to die to ourselves to our selfishness to give up more of what we like and to do more of what god likes that is what a cross is not just for suffering but a cross is supposed to be a place where we die so that's why my dear friends when we continue with our gospel today jesus is inviting us it is an invitation not to scare us but to create an awareness that how much further we have traveled in our relationship with him with our brothers and sisters today if you were to ask me the greatest disaster in the world is human family is crumbling the traditional structures are no more there people are finding it difficult to sacrifice and to live together and because of all this the society will suffer if you ask me what is my projection in another 30 years how will the world be the world will be more of people who are living in isolation individualism will take hold of us everything will be very very relative i can do whatever i want secularism will be a new kind of a god we prefer to do everything and we'll think that 
we are deceiving ourselves by thinking that everything we do is fine and we will get a generation of society which will be suffering from mental health many people will have emotional psychological problem because they never listen to the voice of god what god has created is for the good of men the sufferings that come here sometime yes it is very difficult and we need to find another path but other times god wants us to grow through these moments so my dear friends as we celebrate this mass today especially when i raise the body of christ and the chalice which contains the blood of christ later offer up your pains offer up relationships which are difficult for you people you cannot forgive especially in the families in the societies the priests you cannot forgive pray for them and ask god to give you that healing so that whatever feeling you have will die on the cross and it becomes something redemptive something that will change us so let us pray for this and pray for ourselves in this mass today